The conclusion of Agatha All Along Episode 3 includes a significant character death, which has left many viewers questioning whether it was genuine. At the end of Episode 2, Agatha, the main witch, along with her quickly formed coven, was on the witch's road. In Episode 3, Agatha faces her first challenge on this path, alongside Joe Locke's enigmatic character, Jennifer Kale, Lilia Calderu, Alice Wu Gulliver, and Mrs. Hart, or Sharon Davis. In this trial, the witches in Agatha all along had to navigate a terrifying house filled with poisoned wine, illusions, and dangerous challenges. Episode 3 of Agatha All Along maintained its eerie atmosphere on the witch's road, demanding Jennifer's alchemical abilities to get through. The episode included nods to Marvel Comics' Nicholas Scratch and references to WandaVision, culminating in a surprising twist at the end. This twist featured the death of a key character, leaving viewers to wonder if it will have lasting effects. The character in focus is Deborah Jo Rupp's Sharon Davis, who is the show's connection to WandaVision. Agatha brought Sharon along the witch's road to distract herself from Aubrey Plaza's Rio Vidal. Unfortunately, things took a turn for the worse for Sharon when she was the first to sip the poisoned wine, leading to her experiencing its deadly effects and ultimately dying by the end of Episode 3. As the episode concludes, Sharon Davis appears to be dead, leaving viewers wondering if there's a way to bring her back. The main question arising after the ending of Agatha All Along Episode 3 is how Sharon met her demise. It appears that the answer lies in the poisoned wine on the witch's road. Sharon was the first to drink it, finishing multiple glasses before any of the other witches even took a sip. Because of this, she felt the effects much sooner, passing out well ahead of the others. Interestingly, Sharon did receive the antidote for the poison, yet she still died. This could suggest that the antidote was given too late, or it might point to the deeper nature of Agatha's coven. Sharon Davis wasn't meant to be on the witch's road. Agatha brought her along as a substitute for Rio Vidal. Therefore, Sharon's death might serve as a way for the witch's road to correct itself, clearing out an unofficial member of the coven and paving the way for Rio Vidal to return in Episode 4. Hope you are enjoying this video so far. Do subscribe for more updates on Sharon's death. The next big question about Sharon's death at the end of Agatha All Along Episode 3 is whether it will be permanent. In the Marvel Universe, where superheroes often come back to life and witchcraft has its own rules, there's definitely a chance that Sharon could be revived. If Agatha experiences a redemption arc and regains her powers, she might find a way to bring Sharon back after unintentionally causing her demise by taking her down the Witch's Road. As mentioned, the poison from the trial on the Witch's Road caused each main character in Agatha all along to experience intense visions. For Alice, Lilia, and Jennifer, these hallucinations occurred simultaneously since they all drank the poisoned wine together. Alice's vision revealed her mother, who had disappeared on the witch's road years ago. During this encounter, Alice's mother offered insights into Alice's backstory, touching on the fate of her grandmother and how magic impacted their family. Alice's mother shared that she felt her own mother's passing from thousands of miles away, expressing her frustration at being unable to help. She also mentioned that she couldn't protect Alice and foreshadowed her own impending death. As the series progresses, more details about Alice's mother are likely to emerge. Alice later confided in Teen, revealing that her mother had been unwell and that she believed all the women in her family were cursed. Next came Lilia's vision, where she encountered a girl in an old-fashioned dress who asked, Do you want to see? This girl led Lilia into a dim room, revealing two dead women staring at her. Clearly shaken, Lilia exclaimed, She's dead. They're all dead in Italian when she found Agatha. The meaning of these visions regarding Lilia's past remains uncertain, 
but they likely connect to the Easter eggs from episode two about her being cast out of towns for accurately predicting tragedies. Jennifer's hallucination featured a priest who belittled her and attempted to drown her in a sink. This seems connected to the suppression of her magic, as she later cried out, He stole my magic. The identity of this man and his relationship to Jennifer remain unclear, but his impact on her is evident. Finally, Agatha's vision revolved around her son, tying into the ongoing theories about Nicholas Scratch since the end of Episode 2. In Episode 3, it's revealed that Agatha traded her son to acquire the Darkhold, which her hallucination represented. She saw a baby's crib, but when she pulled back the covers, the Darkhold was revealed instead of a baby. The only vision not explicitly shown in Agatha All Along Episode 3 was Sharon Davis's. However, it's clear what she experienced as she is heard pleading, Wanda, Wanda, I'm begging you. Let him breathe, please. This line references moments from WandaVision, particularly a scene in Episode 8, where Wanda briefly loosens her control over the residents of Westview, causing them to overwhelm her and inadvertently choke with her magic. The other scene that Sharon's vision in Agatha All Along could connect to is from WandaVision's premiere. In that episode, Wanda has dinner with Sharon and her husband, posing as Mr. and Mrs. Hart. When Sharon's husband starts asking too many questions, he begins to choke on his food, prompting Sharon to plead with Wanda to stop. In reality, Wanda likely made Mr. Davis choke to maintain her illusion, tying back to Sharon's vision in Episode 3. Another intriguing aspect of Agatha all along Episode 3 is Lilia's brief prediction. While searching for ingredients for Jennifer's antidote, Lilia suddenly exclaims, Try to save Agatha. The meaning behind this remark isn't clarified, but it likely stems from her divination abilities. This suggests that Agatha's life may be at risk in future episodes indicating that Lilia's prediction will unfold as someone attempts to rescue the titular witch. The final question regarding the ending of Agatha All Along Episode 3 pertains to Joe Locke's teen character. It's revealed that a sigil has been placed on teen, which prevents him from sharing any details about himself with those knowledgeable in witchcraft. Later, Jennifer discusses Agatha's son, Nicholas Scratch, mentioning the possibility that he could be dead, a demon, or even an agent of Mephisto. This ties into the myriad of theories that have surrounded WandaVision for the past three years. While Jennifer's theories about Nicholas are captivating, one particular line she says to Teen raises further questions. She claims that Agatha wouldn't recognize her own son if he showed up on her doorstep, suggesting that Teen might actually be Nicholas Scratch, especially since he has a clear connection to Agatha and appeared in Westview unexpectedly. Later, when Agatha prevents Teen from drinking the poisoned wine, he then asks her about her vision. These elements could all hint at Teen being Agatha's son in Agatha all along indicating a deeper connection between the characters. What are your thoughts on this episode? Kindly leave your comments, do subscribe, and check out other videos on this channel.